Just call him Joe Antoinette. The White House rolling out the red carpet for a swanky state dinner with the Japanese prime minister, while regular Americans are feeling the pain from yet another devastating inflation report. Washington got to smooze, schmooze with big tech billionaires like Jeff Bezos and Hollywood celebs like Robert De Niro. Bill and Hillary were walking around like they own the place, even though they're never getting the keys back. And boy, was it a feast. The elites gorging on house-cured salmon, dry-aged ribeye steak, and fava beans. And while they got to fill their bellies, a new report claims that an alarming number of Americans are skipping meals just so that they can afford their home. And this has got to sting. A voter panel on Biden's favorite cable news show, Morning Joe, is slamming Bidenomics. We hear from voters in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, undecided voters. Here are their answers when they're asked about how President Biden is doing on the economy. Take a listen. Raise your hand if you think President Trump's policies on the economy would be better for your family personally. Raise your hand. All right, so that is everybody. I feel like he doesn't even take accountability. When he's talking about the economy doing stellar, he's talking about the stock market. He's not looking at homelessness or joblessness. He's not at Hades Point and thinking about how much it costs to go to the grocery store. And he's gaslighting literally everyone in the process. But Biden's defenders are doing their best to brainwash voters into thinking that the economy is doing great. Social media and the misrepresentation disinformation, all of those things are mm -hmm. out there, and that's the battle that we have to fight, and we've got to do a better job of fighting it more effectively. We just got breaking news. Uh, the consumer price index increased at a faster than expected pace last month, a signal that inflation remains stubbornly high. Okay, Jesse, I'll start with you. Even the undecided voters on that panel for, with Morning Joe uh, were complaining and basically saying Joe's in denial. He doesn't understand how much we're hurting. Do you think that a Joe, uh, Morning Joe and, and Mika were trying to send a message to Biden? They know he watches every morning. It depends on if they knew what they were going to hear first. I don't know if they knew what the answers were first, but that looked like to me the first time they'd inter interviewed anybody besides themselves. Mm -hmm. We have Johnny. Now, Johnny goes out to the streets and he gets the pulse of the people. <laughs> I don't think they've gotten the pulse. I, I think their only pulse is the studio, and that's not going to cut it. Disinformation, they actually put out a report that said inflation is a good thing yeah. last year. And I, the expectation is, is that inflation is going to cool to a point where he's going to come and have a little runway going into November. But that's not going to happen. So I have a little advice for the libs and Richard. Hmm. Because you can't bring inflation down fast enough, you have to say this. You have to say Donald Trump will make inflation worse. You have to say Donald Trump will let Russia just rip through Ukraine and make Putin's price hike even bigger. You have to say Trump's tax cuts are going to make inflation worse. You're going to say Trump's greedy CEO buddies are going to keep gouging you. And this billionaire doesn't even know what the price of milk is anyway. So don't fall for it. That's what they have to do. Now, why did I just say that? Because I am so bored of saying the same thing for four years. <laughs> <laughs> OK. All right, Richard, would, would you like to answer that? You know, a Clyburn, Jim Clyburn, says, you know, that that people are in denial, that they're not really seeing how Bidenomics is helping them. I mean, people are every day at the grocery store seeing it. Look, I think there's a couple of things. I agree with Jesse's point that there there is a clear contrast to be made between the, the current occupant of the White House and the former occupant of the White House. Right. I think when you hear Donald Trump talk about the economy that he wants for the American people. He reminisces about 2018 or 2017, but you rarely ever, ever rarely ever hear him talk about 2025 or 2026 or 2027 or the plan, what he's going to do when he wins. He just reminisces about the past. And I, so I think all those arguments are true, Jesse. Thanks for that. But I, I don't also think they're th going to work because everybody no, I think remembers they're that I think they're absolutely, was low I think they're absolutely during the Trump going administration. To work. But I, I also think that there has to be some contrition from this White House uh, and saying, listen, it, the, the inflation's not exactly where we want it to be. 
right? But here are the things we're doing to make your life easier at home. One thing that we're doing is this. We are capping the cost of late fees on credit cards to $8 a month, which means that will save the American people and working families up to $12 billion every year. We've already capped insulin payments to $35 a month for senior citizens. Not to mention the fact that we have the longest, the longest, the longest sprint of job growth. We've seen the GDP grow. And while you're not feeling it yet, these impacts are coming your way because we're working on it and we're actively working on it. And meanwhile, back at the ranch, we have a candidate that's talking about the 2020 election or how the economy was doing in 2017. Or like you said, he doesn't know the price of milk or the the price of Don't eggs start stealing or the my price line, of gas Richard. or <laughs> okay. the price of anything right. for that matter. You know what, Dana, uh, um, Richard is saying that, you know, they're just not feeling those benefits yet. Here's the difference. You go to the supermarket every, every day. way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, just if you look at the, the, the increases are incredible for mm -hmm. the stuff that you really need. And then so if you're at the grocery store and you see people who are looking at their cart and they're like, hmm. I guess yeah. I have to put this back, right? Oh. That's a terrible oh. feeling for anybody. And if that's happening all across the country, they do have a serious problem. A couple of things on this. Um, one, who is the White House's powerhouse communicator on the economy? They don't have one. On any sort, they, they put Pete Buttigieg out a lot. He's not able to talk about this, right? The press secretary is not convincing people. John Kirby has his hands full with the national security issues. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris is not calming people down about inflation. Certainly the president isn't. It's the number one issue. They don't have anybody out there talking about immigration or inflation. I can't figure it out. I don't know what's going on. Bernstein's pretty good. Uh, and if you have him on TV, believe me, he will just keep talking. You will never get a word in edgewise, and he will try to oh, yeah. bang you oh, over the head he with is it. Good. But the other thing is on the undecided voters panel, what's super interesting about it is MSNBC didn't do those interviews. It was separate. It was Mark Halperin did that himself, and he did it on a thing called Two Way. You can check out. He's going to do several more of these because nobody else is doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So he's out there saying, okay, I'm just going to have these focus groups, and you can take them or leave them. A lot of people know Mark Halperin from the political world. I'm sure he, I think he used to appear on Morning Joe. And what was really stunning, we didn't show you, is Mika and Joe's face, Mika's face in particular, after they hear from these independent voters. Yes, and it's almost as upset. if they start to realize, like, oh, my uh -oh. gosh, we got a problem. Yeah. And, you know, Greg, the amazing thing is Ron Klain, former chief of staff, I mean, no one knows the story better than he does. He says he's sick and tired of Joe Biden going to cut a ribbon at a bridge a couple times a week. He ought to go into a supermarket. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I was going to credit MSNBC for actually running that. But then I realized they probably didn't even know what they were they running. We they had to. no idea. They were yeah. they were so surprised. I'm, surpri I'm surprised, you know, uh, Joe didn't have a cardiac arrest because that is what happens when the media, you know, loosens its grip on the narrative. You actually hear the truth. I, I'm sure they had no idea. I'm sure they were devastated. I'm sure that Mika was thinking, oh, my God, if that process is possible. Uh, it, 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 I mean, I... I, I, it just killed my talking points. I was going to give them credit. But here is the problem with the Dems, the people who can tr have the power over the purse. Money as it grows has diminishing returns. If something costs $20 and it now costs 40 that matters to you. If you need $200 to cover the cost of what cost 100 bucks before, that hurts. But when Biden hears $4 trillion instead of $2 trillion, it means nothing to him. This is why a family struggling with food, struggling with food bills, and keeps struggling, Biden can happily bribe art history majors with billions of our tax money in loan theft because to him, it's just pennies. Okay, up next, radical Rashida Tlaib is condemning Fox News, but not death to America. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.